Well, I'm never gonna tell you what I like. Then you know me too well, know me too well. <laughs> know me too well. But then again, I might be revealing all I can tell, all I can tell. Honey, all I can tell. Well, I love stolen cheated. I lied and I lost. So what the hell, baby? Believe in yourself, we got a billion miles left to go. And I should keep myself today. But then the planet starts to roll. Well, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is today. On the night with Night Dreams Talk Radio with Gary Anderson. The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. Night Dreams Talk Radio brings you talk radio like you remember, with your host... Gary Anderson. Well, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Covering all the time zones like a blanket. This is Gary. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Well, in the news, a mom sees a picture or a video of, well, of a ghost. And when she reviews her security camera, it's her son that departed back in 2016. That is really scary. Well, a man who deathbed confession about his father burying Jimmy Hoffa has led the FBI to start digging up the former New Jersey city dump. James, well, well, that one is really interesting. 
That is interesting. I, I got to tell you, if you don't want to draw attention to yourself, you shouldn't mention things like that. But I remember they dug up uh, or they dirt in the barns and all kinds of stuff in Detroit. Yeah, well, this young guy, or I should say the guy who was passing had, that gave the confession. I mean, he's no reason why he would lie. And his father was with the mob. So, you know, and, and he was actually witness to his father getting, you know, the the device to dig the hole, putting the body into the drum. And actually, it, it went in as far as saying that they dug two holes. And one was a decoy hole, and the other one had Jimmy Hoffa in the barrel. Also, scientists are actually now wanting to look at space junk, the stuff up in the atmosphere. What they want to do is look for garbage that could have been left by aliens. I don't know about that one. We'll be right back. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Night Dreams, coming to you from the great Northwest by Night Dreams Radio Network. And now, here's Gary. And I am here while it is the 19th of November. Time is just going by so fast. So many people have been wanting to know what happened last night. We had a power outage. We lost our power. I was on battery backup, which only gives me a few minutes so I did try to inform everybody that we didn't have a show last night, but we, we got the power back. As you can tell, we're here, and it's going to be a great show. We're going to be talking about, well, the inner earth and what could be in it. James, why don't you tell the listeners about our guest? Oh, yes. Our guest tonight is Andrew Goff. Now, Andrew is a London-based writer and presenter of Historical Mysteries. He is also the editor of the history magazine, The Heretic. And it is estimated that Andrew's television work is viewed by over a million people globally. Well, Andrew, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you doing down at the, or at the UK? Gary, hi, thank you. It's really good to, uh, to be here. I'm excited to, uh, to join you this evening. It's a chilly early morning London um, autumn day you could say yeah what what is a typical winter in the uk nowadays you know I'm, I'm i'm from chicago so the one thing i really miss is consistent snow it sounds crazy to say that right but maybe once a winter it snows and it lasts for a half a day <laughs> so there's not much of a winter i guess i shouldn't complain well are you how long have you been in the uk well, since 1997, so it's a long time now, 20 plus years. It's uh, it's pretty much home now. Well, have you been noticing, you know, they, they keep talking about climate changes, earth changes. Have you been noticing anything in the UK, anything since you've been there different? Honestly, no, not not really. Um, I also have a home uh, in Istanbul, in, in, in Turkey, and I kind of moved between the two. And uh, it seems to be, you know, the the same kind of weather today as it was uh, a couple decades ago. To be honest, interesting. And how do you do? You bring your own bottled water uh, in your other home, or do you drink the local water? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's it's. Um, it's the the kind of thing where I'm almost uh, as comfortable with uh, the tap water as the the bottled water. Um, Istanbul is such a uh, an interesting place. It, it, it's it's romantic. It has mystique. It's ancient, but it also has all the modern amenities. It has shopping malls that 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 dwarf anything you would find in London. So um, that's one of the reasons why I, I really love it. It's a it's a fabulous place, and of course, just full of history. Well, what you know, I I was reading your bio. I mean, you got your everywhere. You're everywhere on the History Channel, all these different, uh, you know, uh, you know, documentary uh, shows. What got you into it? You know, it's really funny because I, I never had any uh, envisions on, on doing a lot of television. And I ghost wrote uh, a good portion of a book um, for uh, a friend of mine, the, the very first Dan Brown Companion, one of those books that says, oh, you like the Da Vinci Code? Well, 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 let us tell you what that symbolism really was referring to. And as a joke, 
for my friend, I wrote myself into the story, knowing that he would just have a giggle and take it out. Uh, but the editors really liked it. But they said, hey, you're nobody. You need a website. Um, we're going to keep that bit in there. And I was like, oh, gosh, really? So <laughs> I created a website and I wrote a bit about King Arthur and how King Arthur was possibly not a uh, a historical person, but an archetype. And before I knew it, um, uh, a television channel happened to be uh, National Geographic, uh, asked me to be in a documentary and express those views. And then once you do that, other people see you and, and then you just start doing more and more. Oh, you're interesting. Well, what got you into like the inner earth and some of those other topics? Yeah, well, you know, you, you mentioned I'm on a, a, a variety of different types of documentaries, and that really reflects my my interest. And one of the things that uh, I have developed a passion for, and and I kind of participate on the lecture sh circuit, talking about is this notion of the inner earth uh, and the legends that that stipulate that there have been civilizations of people, as nutty as it sounds, who have in the past and continue to this day to to live beneath the crust of the earth and the view being that even we may not be on the outside. Yeah. Okay. So we could be in a, well, you know, I, 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 I'm just thinking, I was reading an article today. They are basically saying in our galaxy, when you go past it to a certain extent, it's like a wall there. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's funny you should mention that because this, this notion has only kind of resurfaced in the past, um, year or so uh, I, I i remiss to say that it's trendy now but it's this ancient you know every ancient culture from the hebrew culture to you know ancient uh tibetan chinese they talk about the firmament they talk about the fact that um you know those it's almost it's christmas season right we have these little sort of um what do you call them you shake them and it looks like it's snowing inside and the little white oh yeah uh, yeah that little globes yes yeah yeah so the, the firmament is like that for earth um and it's made of water and it separates us who are safely beneath it from the waterly abode beyond it and as absolutely nuts as that sounds, there's PhDs who will tell you, we can't leave. Sorry, we can never leave. Why do you think rainbows are arched? Why do you think rockets go up and veer to the left? There's unclassified documents that talk about ABC, but really, if you look at them, they also reference projects where uh, uh, space programs would go up to photograph the firmament and try to plow through it. And it looks like there's water emitting from the, uh, the, the, the space shuttle. Um, and it is, it looks like it's exploding, but it's just hitting the firmament. So there is this notion that the, the sun and the moon are inside of this enclosure for which we cannot leave. You know, again, too, I've been reading about that also. But could we be, you know, because I had Michio Kaku on, I've had other scientists on, you know, and a lot of them have these real weird theories, you know, that maybe we're living in a hologram or we're running in, in some type of computer simile, you know, or something. That is that a possibility, too? Well, you know, I just, I just wouldn't rule it out. Um, I, I think... You know, I'm a believer in Occam's razor, so let's go for the simplest explanation first. So maybe it wasn't aliens, maybe the 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 ancients were, for instance, having um, consuming hallucinogenics and they were having a shamanic experience, and that's why they drew these images. Always go with the logical explanation first. But that said, I do think that the, the reality, once we understand it in our lifetime or in the great beyond, is going to be far weirder than we think it is. 
I know it's getting weirder every day, Andrew. You know that. Yeah, I you know I can't help it. You know because this topic, I think of Journey to the Center of the Earth. You know, and and there's been a couple of those movies. Uh, and uh, I is that possible that we could actually even even if we're in a spear right now, you know what we think is the ground and beneath us could be just another layer. It just two weeks ago in the news they they discovered another part of the earth they didn't thought it would exist and uh, another area under the mantle in which they they're scratching their heads right now. Yeah, I mean, when I hear that kind of news, it doesn't shock me at all. I, I did a show for uh, Discovery Channel, What on Earth, um, and we did an episode on uh, Russia's Kola borehole, which they spent 20 years <laughs> digging this hole eight miles into the earth. And what do they find? Fossils. Fossils eight miles into the earth. I can see eight meters, um, but yeah, that's just ridiculous. And there's more water they have found. Uh, I think it was 2014, the scientists discovered this huge reservoir that says there's more water beneath our feet than there is on the known oceans. Well, that could be, but again, you mentioned this hole they drilled in, in Russia, you know, eight miles down, you know, Art Bell supposedly, I don't know if you remember who Art Bell was. Oh, of course. Yeah. He was running constantly these sounds because they supposedly uh, lowered a microphone down that hole and they recorded some really strange, scary sounds. Yes, and of course, all those are discredited, right? Oh, it was just a hope. But, you know, it, really, who do you believe? I mean, those accounts are, are by, um, yes, people who lowered a camera, but also just ordinary people like you and I are the ones who reported hearing that. So it is really, really interesting. And you, you mentioned, um, and I'm really glad you mentioned Jules Verne, because from my perspective, in the modern era, um, he really kicks the party off with the inner earth. I mean, it's it's 1864. He comes out with a journey to the center of the earth, um, and everyone has read it or, or seen it. Uh, but what I love about it is is that it's this account of going down to a volcano into the center of the earth. And what does this team of of explorers report? They report that they see a mammoth, a mammoth inside the earth. And, you know, of course, that's absolutely, you know, ridiculous, right? But hold that thought and, and come forward in time um, 75 years or so. My math is a bit shaky at, at three in the morning, but, <laughs> but there we go. When you have Admiral Byrd, the most meddled, uh, American military, most respected American military person probably in history. And when he takes off on his famous flight, and this is chronicled in his diary, um, <laughs> he, he's, he's saying, okay, the instruments have kind of gone funny. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Antarctic, there should be some some snow down there, but it's all green. And, well, hang on. What is a mammoth doing down there? And, and, and so this notion that the entrance to the inner earth, it's not a door that you open and go in, it's a gradual progression that you don't even know that you've entered until you start to see that everything is kind of different. Oh, yeah. How about on research? You know, has anybody actually tried to find a way to the center of the earth? Well, you know, in all due respect, um, and I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful or um, controversial, but I probably don't trust NASA as much as a lot of people. However, um, if you look at their own images, you know, you can start, and a lot of them are, are gone now, but people like me save these. <laughs> You're smart. Uh, I don't. I have two times with, you know, Antarctica. I'm going to be honest with you. 
uh, a friend of mine who runs a uh, sky a sky ships over cashiers uh, dot com. She does you know UFO reports, Bigfoot reports, Earth changes, weird stuff. And w- back about a year, year and a half ago, she notified me, "Hey, go on to Google, you know, and, and look at this. It's an Antarctica, and it looked like." Well, the, the like a castle, the remains of a castle. And I, 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 I told my producer about it. We looked at it and we saw it. Was I smart enough to screenshot it? No. But the next day I figured I'm going to go screenshot this, you know, for my records. I couldn't get on. It was blacked out. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not surprised. It's fascinating, but I'm not surprised because... Think of all the conflict we have in the world between countries. What's the one thing in history that they all agree on? And that is you cannot go anywhere near Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> forget about it. And and um, if you look at the NASA images of the poles, they are wide open. Um, the aurora borealis is flying out from within. And they're wide open as though it's some kind of black hole. And you think, okay, well, that's that can't be real. I mean, that's what NASA tells us. That's what ESA tells us, uh, shows us. Um, and that's what the, the Russian Mir um, expedition shows us. And, and now it's all kind of redacted. It's kind of this white-ish, the pole is. Uh, area and if you look at even what NASA wants us to believe Saturn looks like look at the poles it's like a hexagon the pole is different from every place else on the planet and people who have uh, historically gone there um, Jules Verne being uh, has written about it but but Admiral Byrd having gone there and others have gone there they all report that it's they don't know that they're going in. It's so big that they don't know they're going in to the center of the earth. It just gradually changes. And before you know it, you're surrounded by, you know, all the kinds of things that you were just talking about. Castles. How can there be castles in Antarctica? Yeah. It, well, you know, if you, you sit there and, and listen to NASA or NOAA or a bunch of different, you know, it, it, yeah, they, it, no way. But, you know, it, it's kind of weird. I mean, when you see some of the th- these things, it, it makes you wonder how much we're being lied to. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly it. And 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 what do they fear? Um, if you look at, for instance, you know, I'm not I'm not an expert uh, or an authority or even uh, a highly informed enthusiast on the flat earth. So I'm not adhering to flat earth, but I do. And my, my, my opinion on this subject changes. It just evolves because I learn more and I adjust my, my point of view. But it would appear that there's a dome, <laughs> a dome above earth. We're not on the outside. And, and although the surface of the Earth, for which we're told, is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, can you feel your cheek kind of going like this? Like, yeah. I don't. Um, and, but beneath us is, is layers of Earth. So it's not like we're flat, but it's, it's, it's like if there is this famous ice wall that goes around like the photo um, of the United Nations that shows our continents surrounded by an ice wall with other continents beyond the ice wall. Could those continents be, you know, Atlantis and Muir and, and places of, 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 uh, of lore? I wonder. It makes me wonder. You know, Andrew, I keep thinking about that hole that was, you know, drilled in Russia uh, you know, at that death to bring up fossils, that really is strange. It, it, and it's and you don't hear about it. People don't talk about it. But how could fossils be that deep? Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and, and people say, oh, well, that, 
it's just folklore. No, that's science. That, that's real science. But but what have the scientists said? I mean, you, you can start with Edmund Edmund Haley. They named a, a bloody comet after him, right? You know, and 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 he envisioned an inner earth that was luminous and and possibly inhabited. Um, and that's where the Aurora Borealis came out. And, and Leonard Euler followed him and said the same thing, only you know what, there's an inner sun there. And Frederick Gosk followed him. And, and you know, there's a whole long list of scientists. And what's really interesting is not far from me here in uh, uh, the UK, uh, just north of London a bit, is the famous story of the green children of St. Martin's Land, uh, of, of Woolput. I'm not sure if you've ever... Um, no, why don't, you, why don't you tell the listeners about it? Because I'm curious now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so interesting. It's the 12th century. Um, so yeah, everyone kind of knows where Cambridge is. So it's kind of around Cambridge in that general area. And these two children appear. Um, and they're, I think they're like five and seven years old. Their skin is green. They don't speak English. They won't eat food. Um, eventually, the 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 girl um, adapts to a, a vegetarian diet that she can consume. Uh, the boy doesn't um, do as well. He dies, and and the girl learns to to speak English um, over time. And she tells the story about how her and her her brother were tending to the flocks and they heard these bells, which were the bells of Barry St. Edmund's uh, Cathedral. And and before they knew it, they were climbing uh, a, a hill and a mountain and they were up on this land and, and they didn't know how they got there. But they said, you know, they are from the land of, of, of St. Martin. Um, and, and, and in their land, there is a dimly lit sun, kind of like our twilight. Uh, and, and beyond it, there's a great water with a brighter sun. Um, and, and they're interviewed um, by William of Newburgh in 1189. And, and he's like the blogger of the day who's doing a real time um, interview with the girl. And, and you know, her account is, is, you know, it's now legendary, really. That is interesting. Do you think possibly, Andrew, that there could be multiple layers of, the, of whatever we're on with different civilizations and different ones? Yeah, you know, I, I, I do. It, it, it sounds like everyone, you know, the famous Aragatha. Um, well, you know, that is, as I understand it, uh, a particular place within uh, the inner earth, just like St. Martin's Land is a place within the inner earth that appears to be um, around the middle of England, where people's skin is green. And, you know, I, I kind of um, rift for a few weeks on the green skin theme because I just went up to uh, to visit uh, Richard III in Leicester um, to finally see his his tomb, which I discovered in the parking lot a few years ago, et cetera, et cetera. And there's statues of St. Martin everywhere, and he's green. So it got me thinking, well, who else is green skin? Osiris is green skin. What's his title? God of the underworld. Hmm, that's interesting. How about the green knight? Why is his skin green? <laughs> and he did party tricks, like he got decapitated and put his head back on. Um, so, so yeah, that would this, be a headache, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, this tradition of um, even the devil was green skinned in all the early accounts. So is one, as you allude to, is there one part of the inner earth where people have green skin? It's not that extraordinary when you think about the kind of sunlight that they have and the diet they would have. That is a big possibility. You know, I, I just think keep thinking, you know, journey to the center of the earth where they went down and they went through different levels of different creatures from even to like humanoids in a roundabout way. It, it, and it just, you know, and then at the end, they have this beautiful ocean with a sun. Yeah, it, you know, and, and Jules Verne is, was uh, an initiate. 
um, one of my passions. I used to be chairman of the historical society that that studied the mystery of Rem Le Chateau, which is the precursor to the Da Vinci Code mystery. And Jules Verne wrote novels whose place names, I'm sorry, whose characters are actually place names around Cathar country in the south of France. Um, and he, he clearly was an initiate. So when he's writing Journey to the Center of the Earth, um, it doesn't appear to be a fictional account. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Andrew, we need to take a break for the radio station. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more. What could be in the center of the earth? And then I want to get into this vampire thing that you, you, know, you mentioned. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. Okay, my friend. We'll be right back with Andrew right after this. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. shaking stood steady as they tumbled down kept your head through the falling and breaking when others stumbled you stood your ground you knew that open could leave you wide open to the dangerous changes in stranger days to come Darkness grows in the mist and shadows Puppets pose and deeds betray There are myths that persist And we all know words can keep the truth at bay Bring on the night with Night Dreams Talk Radio with Gary Anderson. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Digital Broadcasting Radio, like it should be. The best in paranormal talk radio with your host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. We got Andrew. We're talking about, well, what could be under our feet? You know, somebody on chat was talking about maybe there could be tunnels. There could be cities and all that stuff, you know, under our feet. Yeah, I mean, and it gets, uh, Gary, it gets so interesting today with all the conversation about the deep underground military bases and the technology. We've all seen photos of these diggers that are, you know, uh, have a um, um, sort of uh, uh, ability to melt everything in front of it and just drill down into the ground at, at incredible rates. Um, and by all accounts, there uh, in modern times, we've created cities beneath the earth for, um, you know, who knows what purposes, nefarious, most likely. But but um, it's 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 not something new. And that's the really interesting thing. And some of the great um, pieces of work that have been done on this on this, like that, the Kingdom of Aragatha by Alexander St. Ives. Um, there's multiple books like that where an initiate from the inner earth has come and said, I'm going to tell you about what's there. And then they produce these books with all this incredible detail about the civilizations that are um, beneath our feet. Yeah, you know, too, you know, back here in the United States, back in the 80s and early 90s, people all across the country were reporting hearing weird hums coming from the ground like machinery and hearing like you know like many earthquakes you know in their house and along with these hums and stuff i don't know if you remember any of that stuff I, you know i do and what's funny about that gary is that that's now going on here interesting 
And I, I have friends who are, are just obs obsessed with it, understandably, and they're, they're out with their phones and recording it and saying, listen, to what is that sound? Could you imagine at two o'clock in the morning, you're hearing a, a hum and you're looking all through your house and you can't find it. You go outside and you say in your mind, I swear it's coming from the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, um, I do a lot of different programs and, and I'm always sort of suggesting we talk about the inner earth and everyone's always like, no, no, let's talk about the Nazis. Uh, okay. It's always we'll about, about the Nazis. Nazis again. Isn't it? Um, and they are fascinating, right? But we, we kind of beat them to death. Uh, um, uh, and, but they play into this inner earth, don't they? I mean, you know, who was it? Carl Unger wrote a letter saying, hey, we've arrived with our U-boat um, in the inner earth, and it's pretty amazing. And guess what? We're not coming back. And by the way, here's some instructions, very specific for um, an underground vessel to uh, to find the inner earth. And, and so you have this whole notion of uh, the fact that there's contemporary civilizations of the Nazi era who have fled to uh, an, another realm uh, of the earth beneath, beneath our feet. Well, you know, something happened a couple of years ago in Antarctica. You know, a whole bunch of scientists all, you know, went to Antarctica and politicians and it was like it, in the news, but it was kind of covered up. And no, we didn't find any information about what was going on, why these scientists, why these politicians and all these people were going to Antarctica. And there was rumors that they found a underground cave. It went somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, John Kerry in his very last days in, in office back then was, um, where does he go? He's in Antarctica. Why? You know, we're not told, right? Um, and 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 your um, observation earlier about that that uh, Google Earth location that shows you a castle, and there, there's another one, um, and I think it's still on the internet. And I'm just convinced it must be a hoax because it's just too ridiculously perfect. But it shows um, if you zoom in a, a particular coordinate. Uh, that there's this big spaceship in the ice and it looks just like the spaceship in the X-Files movie. <laughs> so I think, oh, this must be a hoax, but there it is on Google Earth. So what are you to believe? It's hard too, you know, a again, Linda, uh, well, I should say uh, Mary Joyce, back a year ago, sent me again, Google uh, Maps, Antarctica. It was a cavern big enough where you could fly a 747 into it. And again, I was not very intelligent. I should have screenshot it. I should have saved it. I looked at it. I studied it. I'm going, wow, this is huge. It's, it is not normal what I saw. And the next day I went back to, you know, do my thing and it was blocked out. I couldn't even get to it. Wow. I mean, Admiral Byrd, I come back to him again because he's such a respected figure on his, you know, infamous flight uh, that was recorded in his diary, which is published after his death because he did an interview with the Chilean newspaper after this flight and the, the government just shut him down. You stop talking about that stuff. But in his diary, you know, he talks about having... Um, you know, yeah, he saw the mammoth and he saw this crystal city. Then all of a sudden there's um, planes with swastikas on them. Um, and and they've taken over the controls of his plane and they land him in the ground. And he meets the the uh, uh, the master of the inner earth who, who tells him. And this is what's so interesting to me because this is the common thread in all the allegedly firsthand accounts is that we hold – we the inner earth masters, the history of arts and sciences of your planet. And when you need them, and you will, because you're going to be decimated, we will return and give them to you so you can relaunch your golden era um, with what has been learned before you. And we've held on to them so the bad guys won't, won't, um, 
absorb them. And and this is something that I'm, I'm quite passionate about because I am uh, part of a team, um, uh, we call it Project Restoration, uh, the brains of which is Klaus Dana, one of the world's uh, experts on uh, ancient relics. And he has a technology, um, it's a combination of old school and new school, that can identify where these places are. Um, and, and that initiate uh, uh, who told Alexander St. Ives about the fact that all the earth is like a checkerboard filled with these chambers of preserved knowledge. But woe is, is he or she that attempts to find it um, because you may enter that chamber, but you're not going to understand what you're seeing and you're going to never leave. So really scary stuff. But we are... Um, of the belief that the time is now, sorry, to unearth that information. And we are doing uh, an excavation uh, in the UK where we have identified that these chambers, um, one of the places where these chambers exist. Very interesting. How long have you been involved with that, Andrew? You know, it's it's just been a couple of years, and it's um, it's a village in uh, in England that's been forgotten. It has a, a, a royal history, but no one ever thinks about it. Um, I went to the council. The council loved uh, our research, validated with satellite images, not just satellite images, but the same satellite. And this is a bit dodgy because it's not 100% um, cricket, as they say, um, is the same satellite the U.S. military would use to find underground uh, Chinese military bases, et cetera. And it confirms um, what Klaus has uh, found. And so you go to the council, you, you, you do it transparently above board, and all of a sudden they're like, um, we've changed our mind. We're not going to work with you. We don't want to see you digging around here. Oh, okay. So you have to find a local homeowner, which we've done, several of them, um, who are keen to let us uh, excavate on their property. And we're in the midst of uh, doing that as we speak. Very interesting. Can you keep us informed what you find? We'd love to. We'd love to. And, and you know, the, the thing about it is there's a, there's a paranormal element to it that uh, I'm resident to a... Uh, admit and the satellite operator this guy he was in he was in Iraq he's an IT expert now he's operating the satellite technology and he has said when he points the satellite at certain places where he identifies there's there's underground <clears throat> excuse me underground dwellings and chambers all the servers explode the equipment fails and <clears throat> as he loses his voice um <laughs> It's as though it's protected. It is protected. It's magically protected. It's protected with a technology that we can't really understand. Um, and you have to have, I know it sounds woo-woo, but you have to have permission. So our first excavation failed. We didn't have permission. And we had to go to great lengths to find out who is protecting it, why, and are we worthy? Uh, and do we have permission? Again, apologies if that sounds woo-woo, but that's if it wasn't happening happening to me, I wouldn't believe it. Very, very interesting. Now we only got a few minutes left. What can you say about this vampire thing? Because that really interests me. Yeah, so uh, the curse of the Highgate vampire. It's streaming now on Discovery Plus. It's only been out since Halloween. And it's a, a really interesting story. So in, in London, we have um, seven Victoria era cemeteries that are amazing. They're Gothic open air museums. One of them, Highgate Cemetery, is famous for a vampire. Um, 1969, I mean, you've got the Rolling Stones writing about all this sort of incredible satanic stuff. You have, you have Aleister Crowley, um, mania, and all of a sudden people start seeing this entity, um, uh, tall, um, uh, with red piercing eyes and big claw like hands. And they see it walking through walls into the cemetery, a priest. Uh, researches it and is of the opinion it's a vampire. Um, the head of the British Occult Society, David Ferrant, uh, believes that um, 
based upon the markings in the tombs of the cemetery that the Satanists have made, if they were successful in conjuring the entity it looks like they were trying to conjure, that it would manifest and stay. So for the next 40 years, David Ferrant, who believes it's an entity, and Sean Manchester, the priest who believes it's a vampire and he killed the vampire, have this very public debate um, on the evening news, prime time, front and center in the newspaper, back in the 70s anyways, um, who is right? Was it, is it uh, a vampire or is it some kind of um, paranormal entity? That is interesting. I, I, I you know, I, I wonder, you know, we've seen and grew up with B movies on vampires. But if you go back and, and, and trace it back, there was a guy who was a vampire in all sense. Maybe he didn't have fangs, but he did drink the blood of his victims. A lot of it. Yes, yes. And um, again, without uh, stepping out into dangerous um, um, conversational territory, I have wondered if the vampire legend and the blood drinking legend is somehow allegorical for what appears to be a very long tradition of harvesting adrenochrome. I never thought about it that way. Um, because, you know, it, it's really interesting. When, when I was in the Philippines um, with my colleague, Klaus Dana, we did a two hour documentary on the underground Japanese military bases. Um, he found them with the same technology we're using in England. Um, in his village, there's a healer. And I thought, yeah, I love busting people who are frauds and I'm gonna bust this guy. He's gotta be a fraud. You can't operate with your fingers. Well, he opened me up in five places with his fingers and it's all on video. Uh, and I felt his hand reaching inside my stomach. It was unbelievable. Um, and he finishes this, um, just ridiculous healing he did on me. And then he said, now you've gotta go drink the cobra blood. What? Huh? So I had to go to a, um, a place and um, pick out a cobra, as sad as it sounds. I cried, um, uh, kill it and drink it. And when I drank that cobra blood, man, oh man, did I feel like the king of the world. And um, my current research is you look at the Egyptian kings, what do they have over their third eye, uh, over the pineal gland, is a cobra. So is there something about the consumption of blood that we have conveniently, um, well, or otherwise just not understood? What did that cobra blood taste like? To be honest, they, they put a little liqueur in with it. Um, so it tasted, um, and I don't mean to be disrespectful because it really upset me to have to do it. Uh, it tasted like a Bloody Mary. Interesting. You know, back going on almost four years ago, I interviewed a guy that he claimed he was a vampire. Now, I did talk to his medical doctor, and the doctor explained that his patient, in all facts and reality, was a vampire. This guy was living for a couple years at that point, not on food. He had friends come over and they would donate blood to him and he would wow. feed off their blood. And what this, the doctor explained, this guy is so anemic that he, if he went outside, he literally, his skin would burn. He would get sunburned because he was so anemic from not eating. And I was explained after drinking blood for so many years, and I'm surprised he didn't come down with some type of disease, but that he could not eat solid food. If he tried to eat solid food, he would get sick. He lived on 100% human blood. Wow. You know, as, as uh, incredible as that sounds, it uh, in a way doesn't surprise me because there is... And if you look at art, there's pictures of uh, adrenochrome harvesting 
that go back a long time. And there's no other way to explain that photo of that young child being ripped apart and people consuming its blood. Why would you have a, a, a relief or a sketch of that a thousand years ago, 500 years ago? Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very disturbing. And it's, it's something that, of course, we all are aware of is on the fringes of uh, discussion today. It, it, it is. I mean, when you talk about vampires, you know, people said, oh, there's no vampires. But there's people out there that live on blood and, you know, and, and, and function. So maybe something in the blood, it, it, it rejuvenates the body. I don't know. I've, you know, I've never did any deep research in it. I never had the desire. But you just intrigued me, too. And you said you went to the Philippines and... And you had the hand on healing where he went into your body and you had it on video. I mean, clearly, did he actually go into your body cavity? Yeah, I was I was so smug. I'm embarrassed how smug I was. I had um, GoPro set up all around him. Um, I had my colleague with my iPhone and you're lying naked on a table with a sheet over you. And uh, I had a big smirk on my face, like this is going to be great. It's going to bust. I heard that he would um, just put his finger in your stomach and take out your stomach. He would take out your eyeball and clean it and put it back. I'm like, yeah, right. Let me let me add this guy. And as I'm smirking and joking with my friend, <laughs> he he start he starts south and works north. So he went into my prostate, and. I felt, you know what I felt when it first started? I felt this incredible burning, like my whole stomach was just someone that put a flame thrower there. And I was in shock and I just felt gooeyness. And I looked down and it was all red. The next thing I know, I feel his hand. Um, and it's all on camera. And I'm like, oh my God. So he opened me up in the prostate and the liver, the heart, and the spine he said you're fine just a little preventative maintenance no problem at all but you go drink the cobra blood now and you had no scars or no nothing afterwards no no scars no nothing and and so he would be taking out with his fingers it really his index finger um things that looked like cranberry sauce uh, <laughs> and he would his son would uh get rid of it and put it into a bowl um, but I can feel them and I can see them on the photos uh, that I've taken of the videos. Uh, it looks disgusting. I'll have, you know, but, but it, it, it really blew me away. And you know what? It ties in with the inner earth in so much as in the inner earth, they talk about viril energy, which can be used for warfare. I could believe it because it felt like my stomach was being, opened up with a flamethrower or healing. So somehow this guy appeared to be uh, accessing virile energy. And he's just a 50 year old man um, with a shirt on that says, trust me, I do this all the time. It's God, it's not me. Interesting. Now, when you had all these cameras set around the GoPros all around the table, did he have anything there that he could have, you know, stashed and hid? Did you check it all over and make sure he had nothing there? Well, here's the, the weirdness is I have the GoPro on a tripod. It's running as I play it back now. And I'm sitting there and I'm laughing and uh, I'm being smug and arrogant. And, and um, that's all captured. Uh, but when he starts, there's nothing. There's nothing again until he finishes. And I'm like, come on. There were four of us in the room. His son, who I, I was watching constantly. I could see the GoPro beyond him, um, the healer, and my colleague who had my iPhone in his hand. And that iPhone is now the only f video evidence I have of the whole affair because the GoPro stopped when he started and continued again when he was done. And that's just physically impossible. Oh, oh, wow. Ah, that is right there. You're brave. You're brave to even consider doing that, Andrew. Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd heard um, the local um, 
people just swear by him. And the Marcos family um, always went to him. Um, and he's, you know, as you imagine, has a very loyal clientele. Uh, buses of French, um, every year, buses of French cancer uh, patients go there. And they, they physically leave with their cancer in their hand. Oh, wow. Uh, why doesn't this hit the news for, you know, why isn't the medical field checking into this? Yeah, well, that's that's uh, uh, another sort of Pandora's box, isn't it? Uh, it's all about uh, follow the profit. There's profit in chemotherapy. There's not profit in cur cures. So I, I sadly believe that, um, you know, when these secrets of arts and sciences are revealed, you know, free energy and 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 healing um, await us. Yeah, you just think about it. You know, the industry of you know making pills and doctors, you know, giving people you know radiation treatment and and putting poison in their body, saying, well, maybe that might cure the cancer. It, 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 again, does somebody to lay hands on somebody and go in and remove the cancer or remove the tumor? That is, I find that so intriguing. But again, you know, maybe it was a lost art of from the inner earth or something. Yeah, in, in, entirely possible, entirely possible. And I think it's so exciting that we've chosen to be here in this age of uh, civilization because I know it sounds woo-woo once again, but we're, we've entered the age apparently of Aquarius, but the age of awakening, I think, you know, myself who has been so awake for the esoteric world for a long time, I have been awakened to things in the past 18 months that you know, I have really challenged my belief system, but darn it if it, they don't appear to be reality. So I just think it's a very exciting time to be alive. It is. And we're finding new things out every day, like, you know, in space, you know, this and that, our inner earth. I mean, think about it. Another inner part of the earth that we never knew it existed. Again, maybe civilizations, you know, people go around and believe that maybe ETs are, you know, in caverns of the earth, but maybe just like that, the, the journey to the center of the earth. And there's been a couple of those type of movies. Maybe there is a inner planet with life on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and maybe we'll find some of these chambers. I mean, do you know what's interesting is have you, have you seen the, the, the Tom Cruise movie, um, the mummy? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a great film, but talk about blurring, um, reality with fantasy in the film. They talk about the cross London cross town rail project, which is the, the as the name implies, create better train service out into the country. Um, and one of my sort of, dare I say, Illuminati friends has told me for years, the project will continue to be to delayed because they can't find it. They're digging for these chambers and they can't find it. Well, here, um, what is it? Who are they and what is it? You know, I don't know. Um, but in the film, the cross town rail is delayed because they have found a Knights Templar underground chamber full of precious relics. So interesting. Is that foreshadowing? Are there things in the earth? That's why I've written what I've written about this is uh, a, a, a big chunky article on my website called race for the relics of the inner earth. There's stuff down there that people want because we need it now. We do. Uh, and our time is up. How can they find your website, Andrew? Sure. Thank you, Gary. It's uh, andrewgoff.com. And is there anything else you'd like to share real quick with the listeners? Yeah, have, have, a, have a look at the uh, Curse of the Highgate Vampire on Discovery Plus. It's, it's a fascinating saga. And, and Gary, listen, it's, it's been a, a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for, what time is it there in the UK right now? It's going on 4 a.m. <laughs> well, you can be really quiet and sneak to bed and maybe no one will know you've been up. That's the goal. Okay, my friend. Well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciated you taking the time and staying up late.
Let's do it again. Okay, my friend. You take care. Thank you. Cheers, Gary. Uh huh. Well, tonight we only have an hour show, but we will be back to our normal time next week on Tuesday. We got some great guests lined up. Now, we supposed to have had, you know, uh, our a Bigfoot story, uh, you know, a guest last night. He will be on next week as our second guest. We just go to our website. That's actually the best thing to do is check out who our guest is next week. You might be surprised at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Make sure you hit the bell. Uh, we'll follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram and everything else. And everybody, I want you to have a great weekend. Stay out of trouble. And also, you know, I was telling everybody it might be a turkey shortage, but it appears there isn't a turkey shortage. Is this a shortage on everything else? I tell you, at the, going to the store today, I was really shocked of a lot of the basic things they're out of. It, and it's getting worse. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm, uh, I'm doing my Christmas shopping now. I'm not going to wait towards Christmas because I, I think if I wait to towards Christmas, the prices of the stuff is, is going to go drastically up. I don't know if you guys have noticed the increasing of prices, but I, I can tell you, go buy a steak. Go buy hamburger. Go buy anything. It's really starting to, to take hold. Well, till uh, Tuesday when we catch you again, everybody have a good one. And by the way, tomorrow we'll be on YouTube uh, for an hour from 6 p.m. Pacific West Coast time to 7 p.m. Uh, with Thomas Whitman and all that. We're going to talk about, well, I don't even know. But we'll be talking about some, oh yeah, climate changes tomorrow. So we'll be talking about that. Well, everybody have a good one. We will catch you on the other side and uh, take care. Eons ago, when eagles were born, the Godhead let us reign free. We were on the run and the continuum, making choices in a cosmic spree. To exalt the self or enrich the whole, a thought process that endures today. A conundrum under a naked sun of what to think or when to pray. You may know us as the Watchers, and we're watching.